Hello again, and welcome back to Crop Life Retail Week. Paul Shrimp here with Eric Spilgoy again. Yes. Again, again, again. Wow. This is really this we're is too much. Spoil the viewers. Yeah. Well, we're splitting up here real soon. Tra <laughs> travel starting. Travel starting in a hurry. So. Wow. Well, well, yeah. In about a, about a month, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, even next week. Well, yeah, I won't um, be here next week. That's right. And I won't be part of next week either. Oh. We actually have a, a guest interview, a big surprise there guest interview. Okay. So it's going to be pre-recorded, pre so I'm not very... No. Well, it's still pretty exciting. Pretty cool. Okay. Now so we've let everybody down already yeah. <laughs> early. Nice <laughs> ball. It's going to be great. So, so uh, yeah, so I'm, 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 I got the I got the uh, the mug for, for today, which is... You know, mm -hmm. I think because we're going to start not me. we're going to start talking it. about crop prices now. So or crop not crop prices because that's actually positive. Right yeah, now. actually uh, prices are going up. But yes. uh, some of our friends in in the country are not doing very well. No, so, actually, I know Paul here in Ohio. As we're recording this, we are under a flood watch, flash flood watch, in the area because we're expecting over the next twenty four to forty eight hours, two to three inches of rain being possible. And uh, Paul, according to many, many weather watchers, this has become the norm here in the Buckeye State. Um, according to folks, this is the wettest. 2019 is the wettest spring we've ever had in the state of Ohio. And as you might imagine, plantings are very, very far <clears throat> behind. As of June 9th, only half the corn acreage has been planted in the state and a little over 30% of the soybean acreage has uh, gone in. So Paul, the uh, not good news here for the Ohio farmers, but I do have some positive news for those folks out there looking for that. Uh, our friends in Iowa basically done planting. It uh, looks like as of June 10th, 98% of the corn acreage in Iowa has been planted and 89% of the soybean acreage is planted. So uh, just west of us, they're having a little better time this year. Well, we'll see what kind of yields we get because <clears throat> I think as we said before, those that are those that do bring a crop in looks like the prices are going up. There's some at least, you know, this is a little earlier in the week, so by the time people are having breakfast and watching this, <laughs> it may have Things changed change. by that time. But certainly, uh, certainly looks like we're going to have. You know, for those that can, can generate a crop, we're going to have some higher prices. Yeah, I know. Unfortunately, I mean, the old adage is knee high by the 4th of July. And uh, I know a lot of my friends uh, out in the Ill places like Illinois and Iowa sending me pictures of their field. Uh, uh, knee high by the 4th of July is going to be, I think, the exception, not the rule this year, unfortunately. It's going to be a little later in July before some of this crop actually gets up to uh, its normal height. Yes, sir. So I think you had one other piece. Yeah, one other thing. Uh, of course, we've been talking for uh, weeks about the uh, issues that uh, Bayer has been having now that they own glyphosate and the old Monsanto legacy products uh, when it comes to uh, public opinion and uh, particularly Paul, the court verdicts going against them. Uh, we found out uh, last week that Bayer has committed $5 billion mm -hmm. And they're hoping that uh, between now and 2030, improve some of the weed management strategies that the company offers and help reduce the environmental footprint for the company. So part of that will include looking, of course, for uh, alternatives to uh, glyphosate, I would imagine, to handle uh, weed pressures in the field. Yeah, there's not a lot of, fortunately, there's not a lot of innovation on the horizon. I mean, there's there's some, certainly, I'm on the immediate horizon. There's been, there's been a lot of talk about even going out, you know, 10, 10 years yep. or so, and uh, that's what it's going to take to get another product. So we're we're going to have to do a lot of work on to figure out how to use what we have, I think, for the most part, and and uh, hopefully the companies can help deliver on that. Mm -hmm. Different formulations, different adjuvants, different uh, you know, bio controls, mixtures. It's going to take everything we've got to get through until yeah. we get that next innovation. Yeah, I know, and as I've mentioned, uh, I think a few times, most of the experts I've talked to in the marketplace say, yeah, it's probably about six, seven years uh, before we'll see some maybe new AIs coming into the marketplace that could help with uh, weed management. So, yeah, Paul, it's, uh, it's something we're going to have to deal with in the marketplace, obviously, and uh, have to keep watching what happens in the courts and the court of a public opinion. So. Yep. Yeah, so the, the only last thing I mentioned is uh, noted that... Um, Zarvio and Nutrien uh, have yes. a relationship. The the now the the Zarvio app, the, the which is BASF, which is BASF's mm -hmm. uh, digital, uh, uh, I guess foray or digital initiative, digital project, uh, is is going to be wrapped into Nutrien's um, Nutrien's offering. So, you know, a collaboration between Basics and and uh, and retailers, I think, is good. Um, 
uh, and, and it kind of puts the tool from the manufacturer really where it should be. How do we use our products better and how do we help retailers and growers kind of understand when the best timing is for using these products and, you know, for, for scouting and other things. So it's, it's, uh, I mean, I think it's positive development. Yeah. And I know, you know, everyone I keep hearing as I'm visiting folks out in the marketplace have said that, you know, this uh, managing the data that we actually have access to now is going to be one of the major areas going forward as um, growers and retailers look to, you know, better manage crop, uh, you know, uh, crop inputs and how you manage uh, products in the field. Yep. Just, I guess, I guess one more thing about that, just uh, on, a, on a feature I was working on for, for the July issue is, um, you know, really everything's kind of moving to cell phones uh, mm-hmm. as a, and, and cell phones, I mean, Smart uh, smartphones, smartphones versus uh, versus tablets and how, how fast that change came. You know, tablets five years ago seemed know, like they were going to be the yes. dominant used product. And, and for things like soil sampling, for those intense kinds of uh, information gathering, yeah, probably continue to be. But, but smartphones are so powerful now and farmers are really starting to embrace the, the use of that technology that we're, we're seeing a lot more of the apps really actually working a lot more collaborations between tech companies. And so yeah, I think overall it's good and it'll help retailers to be able to engage farmers better if they have the tools right on their phone and they can share that information. So, Although I will say having an 11 year old, the uh, pre 12 year old set tablets are still uh, king when it comes to electronic devices. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, there's that. That's that. Well, maybe Vox person can bring the tablet. Next I, he will ha- I'm sure we'll have him in studio <laughs> sometime in the summer. And yes, I'll make sure he brings his tablet with him. Awesome. All right. Well, that's it for this edition of Crop Life Retail Week. Thanks for joining us. And we'll see you next week. Someone will see you next week. <laughs> if you have questions or comments about today's episode of Retail Week, contact us by email or Twitter or type your message in the comment section below. Your feedback is important to us. We'll try our best to address your thoughts in next week's episode. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.